and welcome to Multi-Level Mondays, a weekly series all about pyramid schemes, Ponzi schemes, multi-level marketing, and other forms of business fraud. I'm the Illuminati, and today we're going to talk about BitConnect, the cryptocurrency Ponzi scheme. I've had this one requested for a little bit now, and it seems that even though this Ponzi scheme was incredibly short-lived, it had a massive impact. So let's talk about it. What happened? We'll start as always with the company history and its business model. So let's get into it. Though founded in 2015, BitConnect was released in 2016 with the purpose of being a platform where people could lend out Bitcoin for interest. According to their old website, someone could receive daily profit based on their investment option. The steps on their website read that, step one was to deposit Bitcoins. Step two was to buy BitConnect coin from the BCC, BitConnect coin exchange. Then you could lend out or invest BitConnect coin from your BitConnect wallet. Easy enough, right? Already, I can see FOMO playing a massive role in this, the fear of missing out. As we've mentioned in the previous OneCoin episode, a lot of people hear stories about Bitcoin's success and want to be involved. Some sources say that up to 30% or more of a thousand people interviewed on Wall Street found Bitcoin incredibly confusing when they first heard about it. Yet of this 30%, 44% of them still ended up purchasing Bitcoin anyway. There's a market full of investors worried that they've missed the boat on the early days of Bitcoin. So in a lot of these schemes, such as BitConnect and OneCoin, they offer a solution to these people, a promise that they can still make money with cryptocurrency. And that's how this scam really operates. BitConnect was doing exactly this. It was founded via Crunchbase, a platform for finding new businesses. And it was founded by Satish Kumbani and Divyash Darji, both natives of India. Their business model is a little tricky to explain because not only was BitConnect a Ponzi scheme, but other sources call them a pyramid scheme as well. Here's a brief explanation of the difference between the two. Both pyramid schemes and Ponzi schemes involve unscrupulous investors taking advantage of unsuspecting individuals by promising them extraordinary returns in exchange for their money. With Ponzi schemes, investors give money to a portfolio manager. Then when they want their money back, they are paid out with the incoming funds contributed by later investors. With a pyramid scheme, the initial schemer recruits other investors who in turn recruit other investors and so on. Late joining investors pay the person who recruited them for the right to participate or perhaps sell a certain product. BitConnect is a bit complicated, but it sort of melded these two together. For starters, they offered returns that were far too good to be true. If you invested $10,000 or more, they claim that you would get a daily interest rate of 0.25%, which is a 91.25% guaranteed return per year. They even claimed you could get an extra payment up to 480% per year. If you then followed their referral system, the pyramid scheme part of things, if you pay your referral 7% of every investment or reinvestment you make, this chain would continue referral to referral, adding up to more than 12% total. All of this added up to 127.25% guaranteed risk-free interest. As one source puts it, there is no legitimate business on earth that will be able to pay this interest rate to its customers risk-free, plus up to another 480%. There is also no trading bot that can guarantee profits. It's also worth noting here that in late 2016, not long after they were released, some of the only information put them as the official timeline with a brief outline of four different phases for the company. Phase one was that ICO marketing efforts, initial coin offering were already underway and would run until the end of 2016. This marketing campaign was accompanied by a giveaway of 4.8 million BCC coins to both the community and cryptocurrency investors. Phase two was scheduled for quarter one of 2017. It involved the launch of the BCC wallet and desktop client to allow for the staking and mining of BCC coins. Phase three in quarter two, 2017, Bitcoin planned to push mining live and launch the staking pool. BitConnect claimed that staking was an incredible opportunity for investors and holders that would get a 120% return per year. Furthermore, the project also intended to push additional exchange listings during this quarter two. Phase four, quarter three of 2017, would see the introduction of the smart card and drive towards merchant adaptation of the BCC coin. Essentially, the promise was that BCC coins would be spendable with many different retailers. This timeline and shady business model in place, BitConnect unfortunately began to flourish from this. 
In 2017, they were in the 20 largest cryptocurrencies. They weren't nearly as massive as Bitcoin, their market value at 1.43 billion compared to Bitcoin's 304.5 billion, but one and a half billion is still nothing to scoff at. BitConnect was growing. People who were able to cash out their profits daily chose to compound it instead because why wouldn't you? Some claimed they were making anywhere between $1,500 to $3,000 a day. And of course they just keep funneling that money right back into BitConnect because it was serving them so well. YouTubers came out with videos insisting that it was just like Bitcoin, insisting that BitConnect was the real deal. BitConnect did have a few important differences from Bitcoin though, such as their proof of stake alongside proof of work. Mining, also known as proof of work, has been a staple of the Bitcoin platform. Proof of stake, however, is a system when cryptocurrency platforms reward you with more coins for owning coins over a specific period of time. If you hold on to your coins, you get more. It's as simple as that. When investors see people purchasing a cryptocurrency, then holding and using the coins they purchased, they'll gain a confidence in a platform, thereby increasing the coin's value further. And boy, was this value increasing. One article states, I tried with just about 500 Australian dollars to see how it worked and to see if I can withdraw it instantly, said Robert, a former BitConnect enthusiast over the phone from Australia. Everything worked. And then I watched YouTube videos and there were these guys, young guys, making a lot of money from just BitConnect. That got me more motivated. He adds, I was thinking, oh my God, I can make one, two, 3% a day from whatever I put in. For people like Robert, the initial profits made from BitConnect interest were addictive and exhilarating, quickly prompting an investment of even higher sums of cash. As someone who previously invested in Bitcoin and saw its value skyrocket, Robert says he glimpsed a one of a kind opportunity in BitConnect. I started paying my whole pay into it. Everything I had, everything, he emphasizes. It was paying me daily and I was just saving. And I mean, surviving from the daily payouts that I would get from the interest. That would be more every single day. I would be paying my mortgage. I would be paying my groceries. I would be paying everything through BitConnect. No one believed or wanted to believe that BitConnect could possibly end. Even though there was relatively little to no information about BitConnect itself or the company and founders behind it, sources at the time said that it didn't mean it wasn't a legitimate investment opportunity. It only meant that you should be careful. Despite this lack of information, people didn't care when BitConnect was earning people thousands of dollars a day. In May, 2017, articles said that BCC recently recorded a market capitalization of just under 90 million at a unit value of $15.01, signifying a 900% growth in market capitalization and a 700% increase in value over a period of just three months. Plus, as other articles state, unlike other cryptocurrencies that require centralized exchange platforms, BitConnect can be traded easily between community members, which makes the selling of cryptocurrency much quicker and easier than some of its competitors. BitConnect was growing even faster than Bitcoin did at its inception. It was called a formidable cryptocurrency and an ideal investment in articles such as these, despite so little being known about the company. I don't necessarily blame PR Newswire or other companies that promoted it since I don't think anyone could have seen their downfall coming. It was not long after this in late 2017 when BitConnect held its first and only ceremony in Thailand. An investor named Carlos Matos was invited onto the stage and he made a brief but legendary speech where he shouted, I don't want to say it. I, he shouted BitConnect several times, making meme history. He was like, BitConnect. <laughs> I'm sorry. But at the same time, BitConnect is yet another example that shows if something seems too good to be true and it has massive growth with very little information out there, then it's worth being skeptical. Thankfully, during this period of growth, there were some on BitConnect's tail, mainly those in the UK. BitConnect was operated by Ken Fitzsimmons in the UK and one source claims, this was likely someone who just stood in providing anonymity for the real people behind the company. They closed the crowd sale on the 30th of December. BitConnect only raised 468 Bitcoins worth around $410,000 at that time. This might not seem that much, but remember before the ICO bubble in mid 2017, it was quite typical. Though even today, projects like this can raise anywhere between 10 million and 50 million. Those who took the time to cut through all the marketing BS could see that BitConnect claimed that they could generate daily returns between 0.5% and 1% by using their trading bot to take advantage of Bitcoin's volatility. In October, 2017, they reported an average daily return of 0.89% over the previous six months. Though it is worth mentioning that this claim was not supported by any evidence whatsoever. Interest accrued daily and deposited into your BitConnect account every 24 hours. These returns are immediately accessible and can be reinvested or withdrawn. However, 
In November, 2017, the UK government issued a BitConnect notice saying that they just had two months to prove their legitimacy or be dissolved and have their assets confiscated. The link to the notice given to BitConnect is massive. So I apologize in advance to any of you that wanna follow through my sources and take a look at it because it's, it's huge. Articles at that time said that Ethereum, another cryptocurrency's founder, might have been right to suggest BitConnect was a Ponzi scheme. Other cryptocurrency founders had been saying this for some time, and now they were starting to be taken seriously the more attention that BitConnect got. Another source said, an alarming number of the individuals listed as stakeholders in BitConnect appear to be registered with inconsistent addresses and birth dates. Additionally, Twitter sleuths have since confirmed with some of the purported stakeholders that the details behind their names are indeed not authentic. The warning sides had become clear in the UK. The guaranteed returns were too high. Anything invested could be tied up for 299 days. Their growth was driven by referrals. Plus the website itself looked shady, riddled with grammar and spelling mistakes. Not to mention people realized that there weren't really any actual proof or raw trade history that the trading bot they used even existed. See, in addition to using a pyramid and Ponzi scheme sort of melded together, BitConnect claimed to have a trading bot and their trading bot was a massive part of this entire scam. Crypto trading bots are computer programs that create and submit buy and sell orders to exchanges based on the rules of a predefined trading strategy. They enable trading based on data and trends, not on emotional impulse. Bots can produce massive income 24 hours a day. Research shows that about 86% of crypto trading is done by bots themselves. BitConnect claimed that their bot was making one to 2% daily returns, an unrealistic amount. Therefore, some doubted that BitConnect even had a trading bot to begin with. Those that researched BitConnect said that not only was their trading bot questionable, but a lot of their promises too. One source that debunked some of their claims and stated that BitConnect claimed, you can buy BitConnect with your Bitcoin straight from the developers of BitConnect. This is not true. You buy BitConnect with your Bitcoin from their exchange and other BitConnect holders. This is very important to realize. Anyone can trade BitConnect for Bitcoins and vice versa. The developers do not have exclusivity like this article seems to suggest. They also claimed every time a user buys their currency, its price increases. Again, not true. The market is volatile. Prices go up and down according to demand. Just look at BitConnect's trading history. Other sources say another fishy thing about the software was that they didn't just give out profits in Bitcoin, but only BitConnect currency. If they had their hands on such revolutionary tech, why not accept and pay out using any other currency? There were a lot of red flags with BitConnect along the way, honestly. One Twitter user, BCC Ponzi, who hunts down crypto scams, sourced a screenshot in October, 2017 from an anonymous source who infiltrated a private Facebook group for top BitConnect promoters. In this conversation, Craig Grant, a top BitConnect promoter in the United States, admits that the trading bot is just a story and that whoever he was talking to shouldn't get lost with imaginary bots. But the UK Twitter sleuths and other cryptocurrency founders weren't the only ones catching on. In 2018, finally, so did the US. On January 3rd, 2018, the Texas State Securities Board issued an emergency cease and desist over to BitConnect and several claims against them, including failing to disclose financial information about how they would pay those who invested in coins in the BitConnect QT wallet. They were also accused of using misleading and deceptive statements by not clearly disclosing the risks involved in investing in cryptocurrencies. An article from the Houston Chronicle said that the order, which came just over a year after BitConnect started operating, reveals not only the dangers in investing in cryptocurrencies, but how long it can take regulators to catch up with these scams. Their article read, investors have no idea who they are dealing with. The securities board reports that BitConnect is intentionally failing to disclose the following material facts. The identity of its principles, its physical address, and its principal place of business, its assets and liabilities, or financial information about the business, the persons or entities that developed BitConnect, including the number of BitConnect coins owned by these persons or entities. BitConnect could shut down tomorrow and take their investors' money, and it would be impossible to catch them or recover the funds. Search for information about BitConnect online and you'll find many traders identified as potential Ponzi schemes early last year. Nevertheless, BitConnect is still operating and BCCs are still trading. This was the incredibly worrying element to BitConnect. So little information was and is known about these founders that it seemed like they could simply let the scam play out and when they felt like it, they could run off with millions. The emergency cease and desist order summarized a lot of concerns we've already heard, such as the unrealistic interest rates, as well as the use of sales agents. The order explained that these affiliates had unique hyperlinks or referral links to offer investments in the BitConnect lending program. Affiliates would solicit people online and their commission was based on their placement in a multi-level matrix of other affiliates, as the order put it. 
their misleading and deceptive statements were a massive problem because while they promised these high returns, they didn't disclose any information whatsoever about the payment of taxes on gains or losses resulting from their investment or on the sale of BitConnect coins. Also, as a side note, I don't know if it was an error in my source when they said January 3rd because the order itself is dated January 4th, but either way, it was very early January, 2018. But rather than prove they were legitimate since they couldn't, BitConnect took the only option available to them really. They shut down. They simply stopped on January 17th, 2018. It's like one moment they were there and the next not. The price of Bitcoin fell massively when this happened as hacks, scam warnings, and fears that regulators would crack down came pouring in. One source wrote, in a release on its website, the platform said the shutdown is attributed to continuous bad press surrounding the platform, two cease and desist letters from both Texas and North Carolina's security boards and continuous DDoS attacks on the platform. While the platform says they're refunding all outstanding loans at a rate of $363.62 USD, an average of the token's price over the last 15 days, the BitConnect token is currently trading down 80% and worth less than $40. So while users may have been made whole on a BCC equivalent, many are certainly suffering severe financial losses in terms of USD or Bitcoin, which is how they made their original investment. DDoS attacks, if you aren't aware, are distributed denial of service attacks. In incredibly simplified terms, it's when a network of bots creates a traffic jam on a server, forcing it to become slow or unavailable. I'm not about to say that this wasn't happening, but I wouldn't call any of these issues bad press. It's more of a, we were revealed to be a Ponzi scheme and we're going to get out now sort of reason. It all ended so quickly. BitConnect and its website disappeared. An investor named Nas says he deposited his entire savings and then four days away from receiving his initial payment of $50,000 out of the 350,000 and the website closed down. He claimed he did a lot of research and calls to verify it was legit, probably stumbling over websites like those we found earlier, referring to it as a formidable and ideal investment. Robert, the investor we mentioned earlier stated, it just stopped. One day we got the news that there were no withdrawals, that we couldn't access BitConnect and we couldn't sell. And I remember that day I was really worried, continues Robert. Robert's investment was effectively wiped out in a matter of days. From there, we were just like, what do we do? I've lost my whole life savings. My wife did too. I was very depressed. After reaching the value of over $470 per single coin in December, 2017, the cryptocurrency plummeted below $1. The value had crashed, taking Robert and his wife's savings with it. And unfortunately, there's many, many other people who lost tens of thousands of dollars. And it's unlikely that any of those who put their savings into the scheme will ever be made whole again. Before we continue to take a look at the incredible fallout of the BitConnect Ponzi scheme, let's just take a quick moment to thank today's sponsors. I get away with not shaving as frequently when I was holed up at home during quarantine, but it's finally time to get friendly with my razor again, which means looking for a new company. Because for me, summertime means shaving more often and there's no better razor out there than the Athena Club razor. Shaving used to be something I dreaded, but Athena Club's products make it more fun and easier to shave. Plus, I really love the color variety of the handles. Not only is it one of the prettiest razors I've ever seen, but it's also gentle on my skin, leaving it nourished, super smooth, and bump free. And Athena Club's razor is designed with built-in skin guards to help prevent razor burns while being gentle on curves. So it's no wonder their razor has thousands of five-star reviews. The razor blade is surrounded by a water activated serum with shea butter and hyaluronic acid, which is a holy grail for skincare as many of you probably know. And the best part is this razor kit is only $9 and it comes with two blade heads, a magnetic hook for shower storage and your choice of handle color. I personally like that light baby blue color. Show your skin you care with the Athena Club razor kit. Sign up today and you'll get 20% off your first order. Just go to athenaclub.com and use promo code MLM. That's athenaclub.com, promo code MLM for 20% off your first order. This episode is also sponsored by Credit Karma Money. Credit Karma has always been there to help you make better financial decisions and now they wanna help even more. With a Credit Karma Money spend account, you can be rewarded for good money habits. And who doesn't want some instant gratification? Credit Karma Money is a brand new checking account where you can win cash reimbursements for making purchases. And when you use your Credit Karma Money debit card, you can win daily instant karma purchase reimbursements on items up to $5,000. And when you make a purchase between June 8th and June 30th, you'll be automatically entered to win $1 million, which that's absolutely insane. So Credit Karma Money, progress starts here. 
Right now, visit creditkarma.com slash win money to open your free account and start winning instant karma. Go to creditkarma.com slash win money to sign up for free and start winning instant karma. That's creditkarma.com slash win money. Instant Karma is sponsored by Credit Karma. No purchase is necessary. Exclusion and terms apply. See rules. Banking services provided by MVB Bank Incorporated, a member FDIC. Maximum balance and transfer limits do apply. The fallout was obviously massive. Two officers from the FBI questioned and arrested the mastermind behind BitConnect, Satish Kumbani. He not only cheated investors in India, but 10 other countries. People invested millions and suffered massive losses. Darji, the other founder, was said to have been working along with him on commission. Apparently, he won over investors due to marketing skills and his command over English. Other sources say that strangely, many of the duped investors within India didn't actually step forward to complain against BitConnect. One did, however, and it turned out that that man was actually a financial fraudster himself. He had invested in BitConnect, but ended up losing his money when the company shut down its business in January. To compensate, Bat had multiple BitConnect employees abducted and had them transfer 2,400 Bitcoin to his wallet. In turn, Kumbani, one of the leaders of BitConnect in India, had Bat abducted with the help of policemen. In fact, it was the revelations in this case that led the police to the Indian leadership of BitConnect. So Bhatt, who lost money in BitConnect, hired local policemen to abduct and extort him. I wasn't sure if I'd read that correctly, but yeah, that's apparently like something that this guy thought he could actually get away with. Other sources that discuss the story claim that amid all the market turmoil, the Reserve Bank of India even announced measures to virtually ban crypto transactions. It truly became a mess for those covering the story, a tragedy for those that lost everything. Some threads online talked about what happened and they were even posting a hotline for people that may have been inclined to hurt themselves and do something drastic. Alarmingly though, even as Diviesh Darji, the alleged head of BitConnect in Asia was arrested, more news began popping up that he may be involved in other scams. Some sources said that Darji along with companions actually siphoned $12.6 billion from unsuspecting investors in India following a demonetization scheme of the Indian government. In this demonetization scheme, the government unrecognized larger denominations, banknotes of 500 and 1,000 Indian rupees in an attempt to crack down on corruption and illicit money. Looking back, some articles argue that India's demonetization move was too costly an experiment. It accomplished too little while causing too much collateral damage. Unfortunately, this environment may have allowed scam artists like those at BitConnect to flourish. The CID or Criminal Investigation Department in India said that from the timing of the BCC offer, there was a direct connection between the unaccounted cash available after demonetization and BitConnect. One investor stated that, quote, BitConnect earlier brokered investments in Bitcoins. After demonetization, they launched BCC through a lucrative multi-level marketing scheme offering 4% returns a day on bringing in new members. We suspect that BitConnect coin was launched with the intention of laundering black money. Although the founders and people that created the scam are solely responsible and should absolutely be held accountable, it's important to recognize that it created an environment where these scams could happen in the first place. Unfortunately, as many of my sources report, there is an undoubted connection between the demonetization in India and this scheme. Bitcoin News explains, BitConnect and scams like it were a perfect storm. Why keep money in flat in a government paper where its publisher can just decide to snatch wealth from the average Indian on a whim? Instead, catch this Bitcoin train so much in the media with BitConnect promising forever returns as it supposedly used invested Bitcoin to pay for other Bitcoiners returns. And it worked, it did. As long as the market continued to shoot up and defy even the most irrational Bitcoin proponent in late 2017, BitConnect's claims were vigorously defended by its participants. Once so much as a small correction reared its head, however, the entire scheme collapsed. Indian promoters largely bailed, going abroad after investigations were launched by Indian authorities. Well-known personalities and politicians were even caught up. I think what many have found and what I continue to find so alarming about this situation as a whole is how much damage BitConnect did in such a short amount of time and how advertised they were. Multiple sources talk about how YouTube personalities promoted BitConnect and there's still videos on the platform, tutorials on how you can invest with them, just as there are personal stories from those who lost thousands. In those personal stories, such as one woman named Farwa, she explains that she didn't think it could be a scam when she heard all these accounts of people she trusted saying it was real. But as time went on, she understood it less and less. 
She said that only on BitConnect was her money worth anything. And she feels horribly for people that invested even more like her, like her brother who invested $10,000. I can really appreciate Farwa's attitude as she repeats that she's trying to simply see this as a learning experience, but I feel bad for all those that lost thousands and had to pay massively for this lesson. Now, aside from the founders, many have also wondered what happened to those that pushed BitConnect on their followers, such as Crypto Nick, Ryan Hildreth, Craig Grant, and Trayvon James. One YouTuber by the name of Crypto Jedi had talked about in a video called BitConnect Boys 2019, Where Are They Now? These influencers, especially the latter three, grew their platforms in part due to BitConnect. Crypto Nick seems to have vanished and no longer makes videos. Ryan Hildreth continues to make videos that are entrepreneurial in nature with titles like make $500 every day, but by the sounds of it, he hasn't acknowledged promoting BitConnect nor apologized. Craig Grant doesn't really seem to talk about cryptocurrency much at all anymore, but continues to post about anything from cooking to exercise to bounce castles. Strangely, Trayvon James, at least according to Crypto Jedi, continues to talk about cryptocurrency and seems to have been forgiven for promoting BitConnect. Even when he's apparently a known scammer who hasn't really apologized either. For some, this is all incredibly frustrating and they wonder how these people aren't in jail for promoting such scams. After all, even if these influencers didn't create BitConnect, they're the reason so many people invested in the first place. Recently, news also broke that Trayvon James has reportedly been subpoenaed by the US Securities and Exchange Commission about BitConnect. An article from Coin Insider says that Trayvon is supposedly testifying this September 14th and it reads, Following on from the news that YouTube itself had been named as a respondent in the class action lawsuit against BitConnect, Trayvon James, otherwise known as Bitcoin Trey, has reportedly been subpoenaed to testify to the US Securities and Exchange Commission as proceedings against the Ponzi scheme continue. Litigation lawyer David Silver stated earlier this year that YouTube had failed as a gatekeeper to protect its users, to allow influencers or affiliates such as Trayvon James, Ryan Hildreth, and Crypto Nick, among others, to broadcast BitConnect-related advertisements to thousands of users. James's apparent testimony might as well determine the suit's course of action. Silver's claim has brought forward violations of sections 12 and 15 of the Securities Act in amidst of other charges levied on behalf of co-led plaintiffs. Reportedly, another BitConnect promoter, Crypto Clover, real name Kalen Powell, was detained by the Federal Bureau of Investigation following his re-entry into the US in connection with his involvement in BitConnect. Powell has apparently not been contacted by the SEC at the time of writing. The legal process is as per usual, unfortunately incredibly slow, so there's no telling what will happen, but at least some sort of justice may be served here. We'll simply have to wait and see. Matos himself, the guy from the meme, if you're curious, has resurfaced recently talking about weight loss and intermittent fasting, but otherwise he's been seemingly quiet about cryptocurrency as well. As for what's happened in the long term, the utter failure of BitConnect made so many want to push harder for regulation, and this sparked a massive conversation around the topic. That Houston article I referenced earlier says this, government regulators around the world are making more and more noise about the need to step into the cryptocurrency markets. Eventually, some company will steal billions of dollars from investors and get away with it because of the international unregulated nature of Bitcoin. The subsequent public outcry will force governments to intervene. When the crackdown comes, it will affect every cryptocurrency, including the big ones like Bitcoin and Ethereum. Supporters who love these currencies because there is no government regulation will sell them off and their values will collapse. I admire the technology behind cryptocurrencies and I believe it will change the way we do business in the future but the days of unregulated currencies invented from thin air without regulation are numbered and future investors will look back and wonder at the snake oil salesman who operated under the guise of libertarian cryptocurrencies today. The argument for Bitcoin regulation is that it would help prevent this from happening. The market would be safer and the risk of simply losing everything would be less. Some sources argue that Bitcoin regulation doesn't actually impact the share price all that much. And though there may be some dips when a new regulatory item comes out, the price usually goes back up again. Other sources say that regulation is a bad idea because governments can't easily control the contents of blockchains or abstract ledgers. Crypto markets are international and don't rely on the financial endorsement or facilities of the US, Bloomberg says on that with regulation crypto exchanges would become more bureaucratic and less innovative as they would have a greater stake in the financial status quo. Non-US based crypto exchanges and anonymized systems could still be used to transfer funds secretly or illegally. Still, banks are something that federal government has a lot of experience regulating and US regulators would achieve a certain illusion of control. 
other possible regulators could make it harder to create new transactional systems on top of current crypto assets, such as Ether. For instance, the Ethereum platform underpins a growing series of prediction markets, such as Augur. These systems represent works in progress, but the ultimate goal is to have rapid, low transaction cost trades executed through blockchains. Imagine, for instance, a system for consummating micropayments for products in virtual reality. Look, just speaking as a pyramid head here for a second, I'll be completely honest and say I'm not that familiar with cryptocurrency. I do understand it primarily from research that I've done, but I wouldn't say I'm well-versed in it and definitely don't have experience with it really. Personally, I feel that if you're going to invest in cryptocurrency, just don't invest anything that you aren't willing to lose. It's volatile, we know that much. So is the stock market. I can't say for certain whether any market should be regulated or not. And I've certainly seen plenty of arguments for both sides. Other sources claim that because so many people don't understand Bitcoin in the first place, the government could easily end up making decisions that would ultimately harm its economic impact while impacting criminal activity very little, if at all. And that reads, Bitcoin and all other cryptocurrencies are completely decentralized peer-to-peer systems. There is no central server to shut down, no one to catch, and crucially, no one to prosecute, no one that will cause the currencies to crumble at least. Put simply, no government on the planet can stop me from downloading a wallet or mining client and connecting to the Bitcoin network. Again, sources continue to disagree with this and NBC reports shows that records from the US Marshall Service show that over $150 million in crypto assets were seized last year and a contract was signed with BitGo, a California-based exchange meant to hold and sell forfeited cryptocurrency. Other sources say that the effect of government regulation on Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies might be limited. In an essay on Project Syndicate, noted economist Kenneth Rogoff writes that Bitcoin will never supplant government issued money because that would make it extremely difficult to collect taxes or counter criminal activity. Would the price of Bitcoin drop to zero if governments would perfectly observe transactions? Perhaps not. Even though Bitcoin transactions require an exorbitant amount of electricity with some improvements, Bitcoin might still beat the 2% fees the big banks charge on credit and debit cards, he writes. So would regulation help or hurt? Honestly, I'm not sure, but I'd be curious to find out what those of you who may have invested in cryptocurrency have to say about it. I do feel terribly for anyone that's been scammed out of thousands and I agree that they should be protected. But for now, when it comes to a currency that's new and unpredictable, the best thing you can do is just be cautious. If someone calls it a scam, no matter how many influencers or investors seem to promote it, look into why they might be calling it that. After all, there were a lot of people calling BitConnect out only after a few months and You know, look what happened. So many people still got scammed. But with all of that being said, that's where I'm going to end today's multi-level Mondays about BitConnect. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if you did, make sure you're liking, following, and subscribing so that you can stay up to date on all the latest episodes. And if you wanna hear more from me or connect with me outside of these episodes, make sure you go to my Linktree link where you're gonna find links for all of my social media and other projects that I'm involved in. So thank you all so much for making it to another episode of Multi-Level Mondays. I love you all and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.